Well, hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. If you know it, say it with me. I got my coffee, I got my Bible, of course I have all of you. Today is National Hug Your Boss Day. And I know that's not possible for some of you because you may not like your boss a whole lot, but if you have a boss or a coworker that you love, Give them a hug today, unless it is a social distancing thing. And in that case, the air hug works just fine, all right? Welcome to the book of Philemon. This is one nobody reads. <laughs> I, don't, I can't tell you. If you have read the book of Philemon recently, uh, don't lie, but put it in the comments below. I would love to know because I can't, I can't tell you um, the last time I heard a sermon out of the book of Philemon. All right, it is a very short book, and so if you've never heard of it before, it is right after the book of Titus, right before the book of Hebrews, and I want to tell you a little bit about it, and I want to you, um, read you a verse that is snuggled up right in the middle of that thing that is so good. So here's the deal. Philemon is a story about this runaway slave. Now, the Bible talks about slavery. It doesn't condone it in that situation. It just it reports you know, what's going on. And the New Testament is, is saying a lot about those things. And there was a situation where there was a slave who had ran away from their master and had come to Paul. Well, while he came to Paul, this, this slave ends up coming to faith. And Paul finds out, oh, you belong to this other person. We, you, you need to go back, you know. And, and when you go back, you know, it's okay. And you also got to understand, too, uh, cultures are different. We could go into all that kind of stuff. Slavery is wrong. Let's make sure we get that out there. Uh, but at the same time, Paul is going, look, if you've, if you've made a commitment to this person or whatever, whatever, you need to go back. And so Paul, though, doesn't want this runaway slave to get in trouble uh, because he ran away to come see Paul. And so he is writing a letter to the owner of this slave, and he's saying, hey, uh, don't get on to this guy. Come on. And you know the reason why? He says this in Philemon 1, verse 7, he says, your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother, for your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. And so Paul is saying, I know what you're going to do because your actions have always spoken louder than your words. How many times have you heard that phrase, right? You know, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Actions speak louder than words. And I know about, uh, I don't know, a million times when I was a kid, my parents would always tell me, are you sorry or are you sorry you got caught? <laughs> you, know, you know, your your words are saying to me one thing, but your actions are saying something else. And what Paul was saying is like, look, I don't have to wonder about what you're going to do because your actions always speak louder than your words. Your kindness has been a blessing to God's people. And that got me thinking about me and about you and about us and that is that it is so easy to get caught up in what we do so easy to get caught up in our schedules and our things and stuff that do we realize that our actions speak louder than our words i was listening to one of my favorite leadership teachers his name is john maxwell and he has this leadership idea that he calls walk slowly through every room and the reason why he says that is he says, if you're always on mission, you're always trying to get from point A to point B, you're going to miss opportunities to impact people's lives just by being around them. And he said, walk slowly through every room so that you don't pass an opportunity to invest in someone else. And I will tell you, I am as guilty as the next person, if not worse, at walking quickly <laughs> through rooms. I had somebody challenge me one time early in our church. And they said, Brandon, you are the most difficult person to talk to on Sunday mornings. And I'll be honest with you, I was offended. I tried not to show it, but I was so offended. And I was like, what, what do you mean? I talked to everyone and I'm smiling. They said, oh yeah, you talked to everybody. But when you stop to talk to someone, you stop to talk to them with your body heading this way, but your face is facing them. And they, and they say, your body language makes it very obvious that you really don't want to talk to them. <laughs> You're just trying to be nice and people won't do that. Your actions are speaking louder than your words. And I, and I had to take that and go, you know what, that's true. Because I'm, I'm a very task-oriented person. And what this verse reminded me of is to walk slowly through every room. Because you never know when you're gonna have an opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. And so I wanna challenge you with this. If you've been saying recently, you know, 
I don't really have an opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. I'm just doing me. I just got my life. I got my thing. I'm just doing whatever. Then maybe you're so focused on your thing that you're not walking slowly through every room you're in and you're just missing opportunities to make a difference. And so I don't know how that's going to affect you. I know it's a constant reminder to me that everywhere we are is an opportunity to make a difference if we walk slowly through every room because actions speak louder than words. I hope that encourages you today that you can make a difference. And most of the time, the biggest difference we make is not in the big days, the big moments, but it's in the everyday, small, consistent decisions that we make. I'm going to tell you something else I know. That is that God loves you more than you realize. He's for you more than you can imagine. You're probably doing better than you realize. You know why? Because you got up one more day. God has not changed his mind about you. And I want you to know I love you so much. It's an honor to be your pastor. And I look forward to seeing you here tomorrow for Daily Hope. Oh.